So did any of you guys create a logo the easy way last week? You did? Well, let me see it. Go ahead, hold it up, a little higher. Yeah, that's what I was afraid of. All right, well, let's fix that. In this video, I'm going to show you a more awesome free way of making your own awesome logos awesomely. As I promised last week, in this video I'm going to show you a more advanced way of creating custom logos. If you don't like the idea of using a pre-made template like I showed you last week, then this project is probably more for you. We'll be creating a logo from scratch using stuff that you can find for free online. And by find, I mean legally and not illegally. First off, we'll need to get an image editor. If you have Adobe Photoshop, kudos, but for those of us that don't have the spare $700 laying around, we can use a comparably free program called Paint.net, which you can find here. Now this is Windows only, so if you run Linux or Mac, you can use a program called GIMP, which is another free image editing program with a ton of features. But I like Paint.net because it's easier to use, so if you want to, go ahead and download and install it. Aside from an image editor, you might also want free images and fonts to use with your logo. Keep in mind that if you want to use your logo to eventually make money, then you can't use any copyrighted or licensed material. So find sites that offer free public domain or Creative Commons media, such as Clicker.com for clipart, Creative Commons search for images, and Defont.com for really, really awesome fonts. For my logo, I wanted a grenade image, so I found a good one on Clicker.com and just downloaded it. And the font I used is actually found at this website, and you can find a link to it in the description. To install the font, you need to drag the TTF file to your Windows fonts directory. Okay, so I've got my image, my font, my editing program. Now it's time for the good stuff. Let's make a new image that's 800 by 800. Then I'm going to drag my grenade file into the program. I want it oriented lengthwise, so I'm going to rotate it 90 degrees and flip it vertically so that the handle is on top. Next, hit Control A on your keyboard to select all of it and Control C to copy it. Now click on the new image that you created and hit the Add New Layer button and hit Control V on your keyboard to paste the grenade image into the layer and then just move it to the location you want it to be in. By selecting the corners you can scale it up or down and by holding down the shift key while you're doing that you can keep the image proportioned correctly. Just play around with the image settings and tweak it to your liking. I wanted to make my grenade look more 3D, so what I did was I duplicated the image and added the emboss effect to it. Then I selected the embossed layer properties and set it to overlay. This gave the edges more of a pop. Now let's add a, another new layer for the text. Type out the name and select the font that you installed for it, and then you can make it whatever color you want. But I'm just going to leave mine black, and I'll show you why I did this in a second. First, I'm going to size it and add a bulge effect to it so that it fits with the shape of the grenade. One bad thing about Paint.net is that it doesn't do drop shadows. So to mimic a drop shadow, I'm going to duplicate the text layer and change it to white by going to the brightness contrast settings and setting them both to their highest level. Then I'm going to adjust the layer to make it just a little bit larger until it looks about right like it has a drop shadow. You can also feather out the black layer of text by adding a glow setting to it. For effect, I'm going to be also be adding a glow setting to the white layer as well. Okay, that looks pretty good. Alright, now my logo is going to be divided into two sections. One that's a normal image and one that's kind of a, a digital matrix-like image. So what I'm going to do is save this once as a PDN file and once as a PNG file. And then I'm going to go to textimage.com and select the ASCII option. Then just browse to the image we saved, select yes to invert the image, and then click convert. 
This will convert the image to text so that you can copy it, go back to paint.net, create a new image, select the text tool, and paste it into there. Then you can tweak the text size, font, and color to fit your specifications. Now hit Ctrl A to select all of it and Ctrl C to copy it. Then click back on your original image, add a new layer and paste it to that new layer. Then just resize it so that it overlays perfectly on the original image. And now I'm just going to move mine below the text layer but keep it above the grenade layer. I want to make it so that it fades from the text to the image. So I can select the gradient tool, but then change it from color mode to transparency mode. Now I can click and drag the transparency so that the gradient makes it look like it's fading from the digital image to the actual image. Now that looks pretty good. So now all you need to do is just save it and use it. If you want to download my paint.net project files, you can find them at the link below. As far as using the image I just created, I've licensed it under the Creative Commons license of no derivatives. So you can use it for inspiration and adapt to it, but you can't copy it and use it as your own. Now I'd love to see what you guys come up with and make. So I've set up a Flickr group, which you can find here, so that all you have to do is upload it to Flickr and share it with this group, and I'll get to see it. Wow, that was a long project. I'm tired. I'll see you guys next week.